is Marcus Gosling, and by day I teach chess in and around the town of Epsom in the southeast of England. But apart from that, I do love a mad challenge. Inspired by a chap on YouTube called Tom Davis, better known by his alias Geo Wizard, in October 2022 I followed in his footsteps, attempting to walk west to east across Wales in a completely straight line. Due to a lethal cocktail of abysmal planning, an impossibly heavy backpack, awful food choices, inadequate training, and an inexplicable fear of sheep, I had to abandon the mission after barely two miles. But there's an English saying, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. After the dismal failure of the Wales mission, I thought to myself, what about Scotland? So really, this begs the question, what is a straight line mission? Why the hell would you carry one out? Well, the idea basically is to get from point A to point B in as straight a line as possible. Now I use a GPS system to help me keep online and um, there are different grades of success. If you stay within 25 meters of the line at all times, you're, you've been given a, a platinum grade. If you uh, stay within 50 meters, it's gold and so on. And uh, well, why the hell do it? Well, it's a big challenge, isn't it? It's, um, it's incredibly tough and it's something that really pushes your imagination. Can you cross a whole country in a straight line? Can you suffer the, the pain? And can you endure the, the, the troubles that you go through? Well, I, I tried. After my Wales video unexpectedly went viral, I received two emails in quick succession from Cody, who lives in Milton Keynes, and Luke, who lives just around the corner from me in Stoneley. Both were keen to support me on a second mission, if I was going to do another one, but I knew that a lot of planning would have to go into it. Then, a couple of days later, I received a third email, this time from a chap called Ian from Doncaster, who explained that not only was he interested in participating in a second mission, but he was confident that he had found an almost perfect straight line route across the Scottish Highlands. Within a week, our newfangled team was already meeting on Zoom in what partly resembled a more extreme version of the TV show The Chase. After several more online discussions to plan this new mission the best we could, we slightly tweaked Ian's original straight line to avoid as many water hazards, such as locks, as possible. This highly perfected straight line would take us from the west coast, near a place called Ardmere, across the entire width of the country. The 43.5 mile or 70 kilometre journey would end on a beach beside the picturesque village of Embo on the east coast. With the route, dubbed the Eureka Line, sorted, now it's time to meet the team. From Doncaster, Ian Coward. This near quinquagenarian is attempting to become the oldest successful straight line missioner. Will this fabulously bearded veteran be the hero we all need? From Milton Keynes, Cody Garnett. The youngest member of our crew is a politics and international relations student who works part time at McDonald's. But will we be singing his praises like his namesake Judy? From Stoneley, Luke Williams. This radio presenter and tutor has enviable hair and can conjure up technological wizardry. But will this red wine lover be full bodied enough to make it across Scotland? And finally, from Epsom, Marcus Gosling. This chess entrepreneur lists his main strength as knowing how the horsey one moves, but will this incompetent dyspraxic clown be able to travel 43 miles horizontally like a rook? So it seemed that everything had gone flawlessly so far, but then disaster struck. Not long before we were due to head up to Scotland, Luke was due to meet me for a training session on Epsom Common. Unfortunately, when running to catch a bus wearing new hiking boots, Luke tripped over his own shoelaces, fell over and broke his elbow, and he missed the bus. This was a bitter blow and gutting for Luke, but being the supportive chap he is, he was still on hand to help with my training, including how to program the GPS. Moreover, Luke agreed to be our emergency contact in case anything were to go wrong on the mission. With Luke grounded in Stoneley, Ian, Cody and I finalised the finer details of our mission and packed our bags. On the 31st of March, I left Epsom in my trusty Ford Fiesta, feeling nervous and excited in equal measure, and travelled to Milton Keynes, famous for its unsurpassable collection of roundabouts, to pick up Cody in a lay-by just off the M1. After a five minute breather to stretch out my long limbs, 
we headed for Doncaster with Luke's homemade CD mixtape barely audible over the rumble of the M1. Following a brief stop off for a bite to eat at Ian's home in the Doncaster suburbs, we took two cars north past the Scottish border for an overnight stop off at the perfunctory M80 travel lodge in Stirling. I'd covered 493 miles that day, so was a bit gutted about narrowly being beaten by the proclaimers, but they did walk to be fair. The next day, the 1st of April, we dumped my car on the east coast at Embo before all travelling in Ian's car via our two stash points. One was at Inverchin, where we stashed nutritional supplies and an inflatable kayak in anticipation of crossing a waterway called the Kyle of Sutherland in the morning of day four. After taking in the peaceful panorama, we continued west to a remote location on our line in the heart of unforgiving moorland, which we dubbed Mordor. We stashed supplies beside the river Enig within spitting distance of the only building for miles around, a kind of hiker's hut. Its official name was the Schoolhouse Bothy, because in fact it was the home of a tiny school up until the 1930s and underwent renovation by volunteers in 2007. We had a nose around this historical bothy, spotting a beautiful poem written on a side table, and agreed that we could use this building as an emergency shelter in case we got into difficulty on Mordor. Having walked half a mile from the bothy back to where we temporarily parked Ian's car, with the stashes sorted, we were in good spirits. We were due to spend that night in a hostel in the windswept town of Ullapool, but before settling down there for one or two drinks and an early night, we paid a quick visit to our start point near Ardmere on the west coast and were given a rude awakening. A photo or video just doesn't do justice to exactly how steep the gradient of this coastal incline actually was. This initial assessment we made using Google Maps completely underestimated the fact we would have to ascend a sheer rock face in order to follow our straight line route. It became clear that this climb would be impossible without proper mountaineering gear. We scouted around 100 metres either side of our planned Eureka line before heading dejectedly for our Ullapool hostel. After a fierce and sometimes emotional debate that went on long into the night, we amicably arrived at a solution that would not disrupt our original plans too much. During our panicked scouting, Ian had spotted a gap in the rock face around 25 metres north of our original ascent point, which we might just about be able to climb despite heavy backpacks. It was risky, given that we couldn't see what lay ahead higher up the cliff. Moreover, I would have to recalibrate the GPS to present us with a new straight line route, 25 metres north of our meticulously planned one. We dubbed this route the Miracle Line and slept soundly, planning a 7am start the following morning. Annoyingly, our slow-mo epic walking shot was blocked by some blades of grass, so instead you can vote for your favourite mission strap line. Hello guys, we're uh, just outside a town called Ardamare, we're on the west coast of Scotland, behind us if you go out to sea, you'll see basically the Hebrides, that's the direction we are. And we're kind of across Scotland in a straight line, 70 kilometres to the east coast in Embo, um, which is luck. We're going to test the, the water now to make sure it's salty. We're going to go all the way across the country and then taste the salt water on that side too. So, watch this. Okay, I can confirm that is salty. <laughs> salty. <laughs> Definitely oh. salty. So Definitely salty. we've got we've got Cody, we've got Ian and Marcus, and we're going to do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. The line is ooh, sort of pretty much straight up there, isn't it? Pretty much straight up there. Yeah. Now in the background, you can see a big mountain. I'd call it a mountain here to yeah, be it's a feel more epic. But yeah, it's going to go straight up that hill. Slightly scary. These rocks are treacherous. There'll be a lot more dangerous obstacles to overcome on this trip, so we best get used to it. Rub it in. 
How are you feeling, guys? <laughs> yeah, they're uh, obviously occupied. This is quite steep, isn't it, as you can see? You are? I'm talking to the camera. Yeah, I'm talking, talking to our fan base. As you can see, we've gone for the army gear. I've gone for obviously Greek, Greek army. So my, uh, my sort of pseudonym is now Maximos Goslingos from Greece. Rusty container. Well, we're sort of approaching the top now, which is good. So I went my way through these spiky branches. You might wonder where our backpacks are. We've just chosen to make it very slightly easier, whoops, by uh, planting our backpacks at the top of this hill. The reason being, um, the rocks down there are very, very slippy, so we feel probably safer just to simply put our backpacks at the top of the hill. But from now on, we'll be carrying the backpacks the whole way. It's like roughly um, radio balls, isn't it? Someone told me I once sounded like a, the person who does the announcements in lifts, which I think is maybe a compliment, I'm not sure. Having spent 20 minutes struggling up this grassy, slippery bank, we provided an opportunity for Ian to take a contemplative piss and sort out his bag. Wallet, important thing to carry <laughs> on a In the trip where you're going to meet nobody for however long. <laughs> Don't drop it down the hill, Ian. No, that would be bad. Don't no. leave it there either. <laughs> get back down and get it yourself. <laughs> yeah. Have you brought your wallet, Cuddy? <laughs> I didn't mean to. I meant to leave it in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Walking down the road, we're just about to cross over and ascend this very treacherous bank. I would say perhaps our most daring part of the mission already. Who's going first, guys? You're gonna, there's only one way you're going to go, which is to the right, up that rock, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Car coming. Watch out. Just look innocent. Look like you're having a piss or something. Yeah. Oh, there's someone else going. <laughs> right. Why is it the most busy road in the world all of a sudden? Yeah, <laughs> it's suddenly got a lot busier. Like three hours. Yeah, it's always the way, isn't it? Next door, um, well, uh, I guess I'll give it a go. I'll go second, shall I? Go on then. Yep. You okay, Cody? Is that doable? The problem, this, this works here actually. Okay. The, the, the stuff on the side slides off very easy. Okay, I'm going to start joining you, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yep, yeah. okay, wish me luck. Good luck. Oh! <laughs> oh god. I fear some obstacle here. <laughs> Okay. Well, that wasn't as bad as the first fence I did in Wales. That's uh, definitely a positive, isn't it? My hands are cold. Farmer. Yeah, why, why is this road suddenly so busy? It's been fucking really quiet. Sorry, I swear, I swear again. It's been really quiet for like about an hour while we've been sitting with GoPro and the GPS <laughs> out. And then all of a sudden it's like standing next to the M1. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, but we're going, I'm leaning back here and we're going up as high as we can see. Ah. Okay. Keep okay, mine the rocks. Okay. Jesus. I'm already panicking. Yeah, I hate heights. <laughs> Well, you've got loads of heavy to grip on. Yeah. Up the line, actually. Oh, yeah. Right. We've climbed that already. That way. Okay. Oh. I'm feeling a bit more secure now that we're amongst trees. I can stand up, I think. Oh, my God. 
I really hate heights. Okay, you're doing a really <laughs> <laughs> you're doing good. Oh, Two God. things you should know about Mark for the video. He hates heights and he can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> I can swim and I can climb, but neither of them I'd like to do if I... Uh, use this as support. And wrap your arm around that. Yeah, got it. Thanks. How are you feeling, Ian? I'm feeling good. Okay, good. I'm feeling good, actually. This is hands and knees kind of stuff, though, isn't it? It's scrambling. Scrambling, yeah. Need a hand? It's, it's getting my rucksack through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fine. <laughs> it's just getting the rucksack through the gap. Yeah. You're done well. Well done. Good job. Okay, that's where we've come up. Probably doesn't look that steep on camera, but it's it is really yeah. vertiginous. If the, the wide lens will make that look like nothing, but that is. That's yeah, we were we we're very much out of breath. Still off the line. Okay. Believe it or not, we okay. need to be more left. Okay, that's good because we, it's very sharp, sharp rock face there. Sorry, you going in front of me? I don't mind. Yeah. Um, it's quite enchanting this one, isn't it? Yeah, I'd say, yeah. Yeah, like mini sort of, what's that pasta that you eat where it's, is it like just like meatballs, aren't they really? What are you talking about? Is it? Oh, not gnocchi. Gnocchi, Gno gnocchi. gnocchi yeah. yeah, yeah. Just with some, maybe sort of like slightly it. gone off gnocchi with moss on them. Are you alright, Cody? Yeah, practicing. Cody stacked it. Were you recording that? Yes. Oh, Dare I see it? This is quite good, isn't it? Because we're going to the left of this rock. Yeah. So we just have to. Uh... Yeah, I did stack it that time. Uh, okay, <laughs> so... Yeah, we are still to the left of the line, to the right of the line, by about three meters. Okay. So. So it's well within deviation. Around the edge of this rock, there's somewhere for us to get up. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Do you know what I've forgotten to bring? What? Is a watch. See what time it is, because otherwise they have no idea how long we've been going. But can we get up? Uh, if you drew a line straight up there, that looks like, I mean, you can see sky, so rather than rock. <laughs> yeah. You don't like climbing? No. I, think I hate climbing. You have the GPS? Yep. How far off are we now? Are we about right? We're, we're well, if we, we zoom out, I think we're... We're pretty much on the line. Um, Where is the line? Maybe because we're in an overhanging rock, zoom out a tad. There's the line. Is that the line? We're, we're to, the, to the left of it. I thought it was a big pink thing, the line. Yeah, it is. It's there to oh. the right. So we've gone too far ah. left. We're too far left now. So we should maybe go that way. So maybe if that is route is doable, we go up that route then. Yeah. After Ian confirmed that heading up to the right wouldn't work, we stuck to our original plan of going left, but realised that due to the steepness of the terrain, we would have to hoist up our bags. Cheers, Marcus. <laughs> there you go. There we go. So, we've just fallen over. Ian's trying to make his way up the, uh, the big cliff. Almost fell through the route then. There you yeah. go. I won't get that far. Oh, Cheers, Ian. <laughs> I got it. And Marcus's bag. Oi! Good work, mate. Okay, we have made it some of the way up the uh, the mountain that i'm about to show you one of the most terrifying experiences of my entire life but we've made it up here and it's an absolutely stunning view there we are um you can probably see from where the road is that we've we've climbed we've climbed basically down that uh so it's 200 well, meters up, up that 200 meters i think it's mountain is it yeah, the top of the top. top. Right. It's about 100, 100, I reckon. We've climbed, yeah, climbed a huge amount there. Um, Cody, how are you feeling about the whole thing? I'm feeling okay. I'm a bit worried about time, but there's yeah. nothing we can do. We've got I to think push on through. Time, time is 
maybe less, impo less important than life. Exactly. <laughs> Ian, what about you? Well, I really like the view. <laughs> <laughs> what could no. be improved? The line. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... Um, I am a bit worried about time, like Cody. Um, but this is much more of a difficult climb than I think we thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, but it's, think... whether, it's whether we can complete the climb on the line. Yeah. So, I think we've just got to soldier on and see see what happens. Yeah. I don't think we can do anything else. Well, we're here now, we can't do anything else. Yeah. <laughs> so. We can enjoy the view, which is fantastic. It is. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep going. Now, if you haven't already jumped off a cliff or put your head in a burning hot oven or perhaps switched over to GeoWiz's channel or done anything that might actually be better than watching this video, then you may be interested to see how accurately we followed our line. Now, the miracle line is the one in the middle. It's the pink one. And the two sort of tram lines either side are the 25 meter platinum run lines. As you can see, we've done a great job of actually sticking between them. So, uh, so far so good, despite the treacherous terrain. But uh, there was more difficulty coming up. If you take the end of the spit of land, yeah. of Ardmer yeah, Point, I think, I think it's in line with that. We're stood in a line. Yeah. Then if you look at that rock face, we are, oh, I think, we could probably go quite a lot to the left of it and still be virtually on. Yeah. So it just depends what's around that corner. It does depend on the whether, the, yeah. Yeah. Whether, I mean, it, whether it's now veers that way or whether it keeps coming out. Yeah. If it keeps coming out, we're buggered. I think. Oh yeah, pushing us offline a bit, isn't it? Yeah, just. Yeah. Yeah. We've just got to keep going, haven't we? Now. Just have to. Do you I mean. Have a look at the GPS to see how bad it is. Or not? I suspect we're probably about 15. We'll be, the other option is going up that, and there's absolutely no way no. going up that. I mean, just look at it. <laughs> okay, go for it, Ian. Just keep going round. That's a stream. Yeah, and there's a path running up there. Oh, lovely. How are you feeling, Ian? Uh, great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think there's no way we're going to go along the side of this. I, I, unfortunately, I think we're going down the, the valley where the stream is. Yeah, we're, we're we going to traverse that. There's just no way. Yeah, nice. It's stream. really disappointing. It's beautiful. Yeah, but uh, we can't just we just can't traverse that. Can we? The problem is, I mean, we yeah we can't again we can't get up that. That's just basically vertical, isn't it? We yeah, we we, 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 we could kill ourselves. How's the descent down that side? Because here is probably doable. I think this is crap. I think we've got to go down there. Okay, well, I'll let this. Okay, go for it, Cody. We're going down there and crossing where that pallet is. Oh, so yeah, roughly. I see. Yeah, there's pallet there. And then there's a path here, you can see people walk up this. There's a, there's a path in between the rocks here, can you see it? Yeah. I have to say, I think that water filter, I'd be glad to drink. Yeah, me too. In fact, I probably wouldn't be fast to it on the same. It's probably melt water. Well, it's not had far to run off, has it? It's not had far to get um, stuff in it. Oh, for Christ's sake. Okay, hey, that's good. So we're now we're now on the line. The stream I'm talking about up that. Let's probably get out of this valley. This this stream. Jesus Christ. Yeah. What the fuck am I doing? Really careful, mate. Yeah, get to flat ground if you can. Over to the right, maybe. Oh, shit. <laughs> Good job. I hope we can get out of this valley, this stream valley now. Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah, we're in it. I think I think we are okay, aren't we? Just, yeah, just keep, keep trying to head. I suppose head to the left of the, of the river itself. Or the, or the waterfall. Um, and just where, where, wherever you can find, I think. To the right and then we'll cross over back up there. Yeah, if we, if we head... Uh, from what I can see from where I am. Yeah. What's the 
Oh, you're right. Oh, oh, oh. you're right, Kieran. On the plus side, I got your ass on camera. <laughs> Ian and Marcus scaling the valley. Marcus has fallen over. <laughs> we'll edit that bit out. Lovely stuff. You reckon we make the right decision not coming up the top? <laughs> Well, this is this is actually just as steep. It's just there's more stuff to hang on to, isn't there? It's drier as well. Yeah. Exactly. This is uh, well, it's hard, but it's but it's easier, I think, in some ways. I, I feel much safer on this hill than I did on the other one. Yeah. The stuff to grab onto for slip. Would you? I'm just lucky we'd have to climb up this. <laughs> Unbelievable that is. Cody, how are you feeling? Having reached the summit of this very treacherous opening section, I sipped contentedly on my Lucasade and we gave ourselves just a few minutes to consider the fact that we hadn't yet died. However, I burst our collective bubble by announcing the pace of our mission so far. It was around one eighth of a mile an hour, which meant that if we continued at the current rate, we would be able to cross Scotland in just over one month. In addition to the pedestrian pace of the mission, we were also suffering from another problem. We were unable to keep very close to our line. In fact, as you can see here, we strayed outside the 50 meter barrier, and that meant that we were no longer on for a gold run, but a silver run. We feared this at the time, and it was a bit gutting to find that out afterwards, but as we knew, we had to keep up the pace, so we got our skates on. So we've worked out now that when Marcus says GoPro, what he actually means is GPS. <laughs> and when he says GPS, what he actually means is GoPro. GoPro. <laughs> so I think we've just got to just go with whatever he says, knowing we know what the <laughs> real thing is yeah. he's talking about. Yeah. yeah. Well, at least I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you know what you're talking about. Did I about. have my hat when I got up here? Yes. Is this the hardest bit of terrain ever completed on a straight line mission? I think we would have to ask Geo Wizard. Yeah. I think we're being cocky to say We are. We? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure, I mean... And we don't know what's around the hill as well. That is true, yeah. <laughs> that might be the hardest piece of <laughs> Yeah, better not speak too soon. <laughs> it, it definitely is. I mean, that's the hardest I've done. Yeah. It's the hardest climb I've done, especially with a backpack on. So we're sort of descending and ascending now. We're going to send this, go up this, and hopefully then, I'm talking to the camera here, and you see, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a monologue. Really bit, sorry. Ah, so we're doing a descent, ascent, and then hopefully we're going to be on the moors, which will be hopefully a little, little bit easier because we don't have to go up and down quite so much, and there's less that can go wrong in theory except the weather. Having vastly upped our speed from an eighth of a mile an hour to a massive one mile an hour, we managed to hug the edge of the rock face in order to keep on line. But then it started getting quite hot, so we needed to strip off. Show us your best pose, Cody. <laughs> I'm not on, I'm not the right, hang on. There you go. Good work, guys. It's the fucking heather. If the heather wasn't here. Yeah. It's quite hard. Okay, so we've got to get up this hill with a bit of rock on it. But you think it's doable, Ian? Yeah. It's yeah. Doable. I think it's probably doable, isn't it? Is that where the line goes? Yeah. Smash it. Great. So, you know, guys, you said it was nearly over this rocky bit. Oh, he's not here. Oh, my God. Ah, uh, not quite. As we get to know our strengths and weaknesses over this trip, we, it's quite amazing how much of a role reverse we've had. Earlier I was really, really struggling with stuff like the vertigo, um, but I'm able to motor up these, these hills. That view is 
just absolutely amazing. I think that's got to be the best view I've ever seen in Scotland. It's pretty incredible. It is absolutely incredible. It's like the colour of the water, isn't it? And out there is the Hebrides, right? Well, it's Harris and Harris and the other one. Yeah. Uh, whatever the other one that's doing to Harris. I don't know. I, I, I'm showing my ignorance of Scottish islands. <laughs> I don't think anyone else knows. Yeah. Uh, but if anybody was any, in, any any doubt where we were starting from was the sea, then I think that sort of does it, doesn't it? Yeah, completely. You can't deny that's not the sea. Very much the sea, isn't it? Yeah. And very nice it is too. Yeah. So our line, you can kind of see, was slightly off course. That's um, accurate to eight meters. So we're sort of, yeah, just maybe nine meters off course there. So we're sort of going to head back towards the line slightly. You can see the guys heading up that uh, steep rock. Our, our line probably goes just to the right of that, maybe, or, or perhaps just straight up the rock face. But we're going to try to keep as close as we can to it. Despite the optimism in my voice at this point, the next section was a complete bulls up. As you can see from the readout, we did quite a good impression of drawing the Malaysian Grand Prix circuit, but not really a good job of actually keeping to a straight line. What happened was we tried to go up the hill itself, but then the, the GPS was just leading us off the side of the cliff. So we changed our mind, went back down the hill, went to the left, except this time it was even worse. So in order to stay within 25 meters, or in fact what happened was we deviated 53 meters anyway, that once again took us out of the gold category into the silver category. And to be honest, it was a complete mess. And it was my fault because I was in charge of the GPS. That's kind of where our line is, like very much right on the edge of this cliff. So as you can see, we're giving it a bit of a wide berth within about 10 meters or so. There's Ian and a great view. Yeah. There's also a nice view of the sea. Profile picture, I think, Ian. Here's Cody in the background. <laughs> was that deliberate? <laughs> no, it really wasn't. Okay. It was like that mountain's got dandruff. Guys, exciting times. We've done our first mile. Yeah. <laughs> so about another 42 and a half to go in that direction. But good news is, um, as you can see, it's it's more gentle. There's no vertiginous, vertiginouses. Uh, I think that's the thing. Uh, and we're just going to keep on going as far as the eye can see, try and camp uh, maybe over that hill in, over there. So Thanks. fingers crossed we can do it. What do you think guys? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, bloody shoelaces have come undone. Flipping oh, So we've had a bit of lunch, uh, salted peanuts, um, which is, wasn't a good idea because it made me very thirsty. But now we are very close here to I suppose a bit of casual water not really a lock but uh, we can get from we'll probably get across that so over here Cody All right. nice one excellent yeah very good so we're a little bit to the right are we yeah. quick quick off the water <laughs> Squares. Sinking. I'm sinking. <laughs> but we're on the line, so it's all good. Yeah, I think so. The bank this way, the uh, just over here. So just over here, yep. Yeah. Okay. I think maybe we ought to have a proper call for the line because when people say, oh, we're, it's to the left, or okay, yeah. does that mean the line's to the left? We need to go to the left. So I, I don't know. With will people remember? I just thought to the left is. We need to I go think, left. Yeah, we need to go left. The line is to our left. Yeah, okay. It makes the most sense for the person on the GPS, I think, because they can look at the line and go, that's to the left. Indeed. Lock do. Lock bloody do. Oh, lock do. Right. Oh. And it looks good. It doesn't look like we're going to be swimming in that. That looks great. I think we might well be going across that really nice piece of land, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think we are the spit right in front of us. I think we're going straight across that. Yeah. I mean, the line is right on the left hand side of it. Yeah. So we'll have to look when we get down there, but it looks really good. Yeah, it looks promising, it looks doesn't it? Really good. Yeah. Awesome.
Cody? Cody, it looks good. Lock do and the tide is out. This first sighting of Lake Dew was particularly significant because Ian and Cody had packed only a small amount of water and were planning to fill up in a lock. Therefore, using some water filters, they would be able to drink as much as they wanted. Um, I, by contrast, was carrying tons of water in my pockets using uh, one and a half litre bottles. This may sound like a pretty fur-brained idea, but actually it did quite a good job in reducing the amount of weight in my backpack, which nonetheless was pretty significant. At this point, we were thinking about crossing Lake Dew and then looking for a camp spot. The first camp on our list was Emergency Camp A, which was what we'd planned in case we had a pretty miserable day. We're not going to get to Camp B, I don't think. Don't camp B, Camp B is another, well, from the water, Camp B is another 10k, another oh. six miles. It's tricky. Which is, I think, is over that hill, isn't yeah, it? that's too far. That's going to be out. well over that hill. I think it's well over that hill. I think Lock so, is not maybe a kilometre away as it is. So, my feeling is, we go down, we do whatever we've got to do with the water yeah. and then we make as much progress as we can in the light and just look for somewhere good to camp yeah. and when we're happy with somewhere good to camp we camp yeah, yeah. sounds good what, what I would like is if we camp by those locks or lockens that might be nice uh, and we might be able to get water yeah. for yeah. cooking which would be really handy yeah. that would be very so nice we could just fill up and, and cook uh, are we almost on the line basically the line is like a map there yeah okay so I think that's, we might, we might get lucky. Ah, a deer fence. Oh dear. <laughs> right, I'm going to uh, hop over this, I think. Bag off. Okay. Arthur's got something shot foot. <laughs> That would have been really embarrassing if that didn't go over. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the gold medal? Could be. Okay, now for the agility training. Please stop it, please stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not keen on this, to be quite honest with you, but okay. You got it. Yeah, that looks good. It's strong enough to support your weight if you lean on it. <laughs> Ah. Don't do that. <laughs> ah. Ah. You've got to get ah. that leg round. Yeah, get, get, get. Whoa. Okay. You've got to swing it round. Full commitment, full send. Ah. Whoa. Whoa. Hey. Hey, hey! That's a tall fence, that. Good work. Oh no, got snagged. <laughs> oh, where are you snagged? <laughs> Hopefully, nothing too. Serious. It's that bit over the top. Yeah, let go of that there. Yeah, let yeah. Go. And. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, think I think that in the ground. that's probably that's beating mine. It's beating mine. I'll go this side of it. This side. Yeah. Well, that was, that's the one I ripped. Whoa! That's making me worried about my Do you need a hand? No, right. Okay. As long as the post is good way. Just uh Oh ah well done, very good Ian. Cody Garland, Great Britain. Oh that clipped oh, the edge. That sounded damaging. <laughs> Here he comes. Don't reckon we've made friends with the dish doing it owns this fence. No. Doing well. That's it. Okay. Oh, fantastic. Well done, uh, Cody. I certainly don't want to have to put my trunks on. <laughs> really? But if I have to take my shoes and socks off and wade, then that's all good. Yeah, I think as long as we can paddle, <laughs> might be a bit of a challenge, but we might get lucky. How it's, far off are we now? Okay, it depends what's over this hill. I think whether it comes in or whether oh. it's... So this is the line round about there. So, yeah. I mean, 
we we could deviate maybe a couple of meters i think we could get around that without getting our feet wet within about three meters what do you think guys yeah i think so yeah i mean at this time of day as tight as we are that would be my preference yes i think i think if it was right through the middle of the lake we wouldn't be able to do that but uh i think yeah okay so that sounds all right then let's uh, let's okay. just be a little bit crafty and go just round the very edge of it At this point, Ian and Cody took the opportunity to refill their water supplies by using a water filter system. Meanwhile, I tried to look cool while drinking a bottle of Lucasaid. This is much further than I got in Wales, I think. This is probably beating my Wales um, distance. So I'm... Beating the Wales distance. Yes. Some sort of strange spectre trees here. It's like they've just got their their bases and roots, and they've been chopped off after that. Very, yeah, slightly uh, menacing, aren't they? I think. It's a bit like we're um, walking across kind of like a grassy version of Mars. Yeah, it is a bit, it's isn't it? Kind of bumps and stuff. Yeah. yeah. How are you feeling, guys? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, almost at emergency camp A, yes. so that's Let's all we need to do. Camp one now. Yeah, I think so. Um, again, spectacular landscape though. Yeah. Fantastic. So really, we just got to go this way, and then make maybe make our way halfway up that hill, and then find a nice place to camp. Hopefully, buy a little lock. After a tumultuous and punishing first half of the day. The second part of the day was much more rewarding and actually we did a fantastic job of staying within 25 meters. In fact, we didn't even go near the boundaries. In fact, most of the line was completed within 10 meters, which was a fantastic display. Well, what a day, guys. It's, uh, it's been very, very tough at the start. Probably the toughest, well, few hours I've ever, I've ever done. I know I said that in Wales, but uh, this bit was like scary i think is probably the best word like i'm very afraid of heights and uh the first bit i was yeah i was i was really really, really worried but uh after the first maybe one and a half miles we've really made a lot of progress and uh as a result we're just coming up now to what we've called emergency camp a uh, which is basically if we've had a horrendous day then we sort of camp here and try and make a bit more progress tomorrow. Um, and we have had a horrendous day. Right at the very beginning, we were getting getting really, uh, well, in difficulty. Um, so therefore, um, we're coming up very, very soon to our camp spot for the first night. And I'll see you there. Is that is that the camp spot? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And metaphorical as well, because we're just literally just in the sunlight. So on day one of the mission, we completed three and a quarter miles or five and a quarter kilometers, not very far. So we knew we had to get our skates on tomorrow. Next time on Mission Across Scotland.